Hello, witch folk. Welcome to our coven. We are Angels on Broomsticks. We're a mother-daughter duo. I'm Kristen. And I'm Evangeline. And here on this channel, we see makeup as something that is fun, creative, magical, and definitely for everyone. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button. Now, today you're tuning into our series called Witches, Bitches, Martinis, and Makeup. What's on the agenda today? The agenda. Oh my goodness. So, this is our series where we drink cocktails and have makeup. And cocktails today are hot toddies. Mm. It's uh, pouring snow. It's oh, snowing. it's very snowy, so hot toddies are perfect drink for today. Definitely. An Actually, I've never heard of a hot toddy before. Really? What? Where's well, hot toddy? I, when I was a kid, I thought a hot toddy was hot chocolate. <laughs> I'll take a hot toddy. And then. For makeup, we're using the Gather Round Sisters Hocus Pocus collab with ColourPop. It's a really fun palette uh, if you manage to get your hands on it. We're just going to be using it because we never have used it on camera and it's really cute and there's some really nice colors and we're going to be talking about witchy things so, you know, the Sanderson sisters are here for us. Mm -hmm. What's yes. our topic? What's our topic? So we're, today more? we're going to talk about the origins of the word Bitches and witches. Yes. First things first, mm -hmm. I forgot my brushes. Oh. So I'm going to use my fingies. fingies. For, for not everything, but like just for my complexion part. So lots of people mm -hmm. use their fingers. I used to only use my fingers. I know, for but foundation. now I, I think it's like, I don't know. When you have so many tool, nice tools, yeah. why would you? Well, so. I don't like getting it all over my fingers and then moving forward and getting my foundation. No, all me over. neither. Yeah. But I got to do what I, I got to do. I've already prepped with the Charlotte Flawless Filter, but I imagine soon she's going to be a, a product of the past. Cause Maybe, because oh, got. it came out today. And we got, we ordered the Luminizers. So I'm so excited. I think it's going to replace my Charlotte. Well, I can't replace. Well, she's almost done, so. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. I've been using her for like a year, almost every wow. day. Wow. I did not know that. So we're going to talk about, I'm going to talk about the origin of the word bitch. Um, may, maybe many of you have seen the Netflix series. It's really funny. Hosted by Nicolas Cage. The history of swearing. Yeah. In one episode, bitch is used. So I'm not going to just recap what they say, but they had some good history pointers. So the word bitch is from an old English word. Now they... They spell it differently in many mm. different... It depends if you look on Wikipedia or whatever source you use, but a biche. Biche. Beach sounds like something you order at the Italian restaurant. <laughs> Does so, it have a double C? Well, in biche. one spelling, it's biche. In one spell, like a double C. In another, it's got yeah. a G. Oh. But it's female dog, as we know. Yes. And since, like, ancient Greece, calling people dogs has been an insult. Oh. Which is really... We love dogs. I know. It's like so many misuses of, you know, dog metaphors or whatever. It's like... <laughs> I've been working like, like a dog. dog. Like, when, when have you ever seen a dog, you know, on the workforce? <laughs> My dog, you know, its biggest, you know, thing is laying in a duvet. Yeah. yeah. Licking the other dog's ears. The hardest thing my dog has to do is put up with ha wearing a winter coat, and that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've been working like a dog. Sick as a dog. Dogs never get sick. Oh, well, they do, but well, um, they, they recover quickly. Yeah, fair enough. So, sure. yeah, calling someone a dog was an insult. And then gradually, like, another thing. Then they're dog in heat, which is a bitch. Mm -hmm. And they called women, you know, who were overly sexualized in their minds bitches yeah which is another misnomer because if you've ever seen an actual dog in heat it's like just this poor dog who happened like as a you know victim of its own bodily Whoa. function and all the dogs come mounting on it yeah like she can't help it oh, yeah she's just there it's like if you only knew it's it's a violent act on this poor bitch and, you know, so anyway, so for the longest time, 
you know, women were called bitches, and it was a very, very bad word. Yeah. Even worse than the word whore. So they, they go, I'm not a, I might be a whore, but I'm not a bitch, <laughs> would be in, you know, some cultures. Mm. But, like, now you can't say the word whore, which is good. Sex worker. Yeah. Which is positive. Yeah. Then in the 1800s, something kind of shifted, and bitch became sort of like a, you know, bitch. Not bitch like the way we say it, which you know how we <laughs> say it, but like it wasn't so much of an insult as it, it used to be. Oh, it, it started to have a shift? Yeah, it started to have a shift. Then? Yeah, it's funny, like, if you had to learn English as a second language, yes. the word bitch is so diverse now. Yeah. Like, you would not know what it meant. Like, you can order a bitch on toast at McDonald's, and, you know, it's that varied a word. You know what I mean? Anyway, so it was in the early 1900s, like, when Hemingway was a writer, he referred to his own mother as a bitch. Yeah. But he meant it like she's a strong-ass woman. Right. And that's when the suffragettes came out, came out and, you know, bitches, bitches are, bitches are here, you know? Yeah, it started to and be then, But then it, you know, it kept shifting, like, where bitch would mean a bad thing. Like, it, it's still a bad word mm -hmm. to this day. Mm -hmm. If a man, if your man calls you a bitch, no. Yeah, it's like Just it can not. only be used by certain people. Yeah, like your best friend says, ways. bitch. Yeah, hey, bitch. It, de it depends how you say it. Yeah. And so, like, in hip-hop culture, you know, became very popular just as a, you know, an everyday word, and, and it was like biatch, you know, spelt like biatch, just, and yeah, betches and word. batches and bitch, you know. Beesh, beesh. Beesh. So true. So it's like a fun word. Yeah. But it's still a bad word. It's still a mean thing to say about a woman because if you call a man a bitch, he's weak. Yeah. And if you call a woman a bitch, she's a, basically a see you next Tuesday. Mm. <laughs> Am I right? Mm -hmm. It is so diverse and it's like whatever I watched the documentary or the the fun little Netflix series and they made a funny point about the Lizzo song I'm a hundred percent that bitch but she's not it's like you say that bitch not I'm 100 percent a bitch because it has like a different meaning in a way yes just the the that or yeah the, uh. so it's very nuanced it's a very it nuanced word I love to see words be reclaimed and change. There's, I feel like a lot of words like that, especially derogatory worms. Yeah, like queer worms. words. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What are other yeah. bitches? Are you a bitch? Oh, we a bitches? <laughs> <laughs> this is like um, an interesting cocktail because it's hot. I love hot alcoholic drinks, like um, mulled wine. Um, so witch, the term witch has actually got a similar history to bitch. It's funny that they rhyme. I wonder if they at one point had any relation. I don't think they did, except that I looked up the origin of the word witch, and it comes from witche, like it's spelled like biche, W-I-C-C-E, -C -C -E, specifically for a woman, witche, and then like wicca. Wicca. was for a man and there's the religion oh. wicca oh. now so they name the religion after the man yeah i know i was kind of thinking that well a man did invent wicca gerald gardner wicca as the neo-pagan religion oh okay yeah so which which wicca it was initially a gendered term over time it began began to be specifically targeted as a word for women only like which was about women. At times, it was like talking about a bewitching young girl, but mm. at times it was talking about an old hag, an old mean hag. So it has had an evolution, and obviously we know about just generally like witch hunts and witch as a negative term and as something like to invoke fear Fear of women, fear of magic, fear of dark arts. I think that was spread by the Catholic Church a lot as well. Yeah, because, like, funny how men can be magicians and women can't. Yeah, okay, well, listen to this. When you look on dictionary.com and you look up the word witch, 
These are the four kind of terms you get. A person, especially a woman who professes or is supposed to practice magic or sorcery. And then it says compared to warlock. And then it says a woman who is supposed to have evil or wicked magical powers. An ugly or mean woman. Wait, an ugly or mean old woman. A hag. Or a person who, who uses a divining rod. But then you look up warlock, and all it is is a man who professes or is supposed to practice magic or sorcery. A fortune teller or conjurer. It doesn't have that... You know, like that dark connotation, mm -hmm. that negative connotation. But when it's like a magic maker in a woman's sense, it has this darkness, this yeah. evilness, or this insult to it. You know, I feel like you've probably heard people call in the same way a bitch. Oh, she's an old witch. You know, that yeah. old hag. It's It's got a negative connotation, but it's got this reclamation happening right now especially in the same way that bitch has, I feel. Because it was used as such a term of insult and such a term of, like, darkness. Mm hmm You know? So for the longest time, witches had a negative connotation as a practicer of dark arts. But then there started to be, like, this idea of witches as sympathetic or potentially, like, good. And one of the main things that spread this was... The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. Oh, really? Yeah. The book was published in 1900 by L. Frank Baum. Mm -hmm. Baum. 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 Um. And he got a lot of this inspiration from his mother-in-law. Her name was Matilda Jocelyn Gage, and she was a suffragette who was oh, reclaiming... Oh, suffragette. See? Yeah, she was reclaiming the word witch, thinking of it as a positive thing. And she also had certain um, spiritual beliefs that made its way into the Wizard of Oz, as well as um, she was very deeply into anti-slavery work as well. So you see that in Wizard of Oz. I always thought of the Wizard of Oz. I told you about my theory. What? Like, I don't remember. The, okay, so there's Dorothy, and her red slippers represent her puberty, like mm, the, men the menses. The menses. The, and... and the scarecrow, the tin man, and the lion are like, like the traits of every man, you know, <laughs> every loser trait, you know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. she's going through, you know, she's going over the, you know, the rainbow to get to her womanhood. Yes. And these men are what awaits her mm -hmm. or guides her along. Yeah. And they are the everyman, and she's the wizard. Turns out to be what he is. Yeah. Spoiler alert: a fraud. <laughs> In case you haven't seen the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> so yeah, that was with the first, or like the most mainstream introduction of w witches as being good and bad, and having this dichotomy, and not just this pure evil or dark force. But now, as witches has evolved, especially in like 90s pop o culture, like Buffy, Charmed, things like that, you see witches emerging as very much like a, the dichotomy exists within the single character of the witch. And I think we're talking about the love witch, like we're mm -hmm. kind of on her side, even though she's into darkness. Even the rewriting of Wizard of Oz, the musical Wicked. Oh, I love that. It's like the bad witch being about the bad witch not being as bad as we thought she was. It's like the witch has evolved to be this woman who is both dark and light and exploring this like dichotomy at the same time in a sense of a wholeness, you know? It's not just like good or bad. You're not just the pretty seductress or the old hag. You're both. And that's why I think it's evolved so much with feminism and especially recently. It's like, yeah, witches, yeah, bitches. Yeah. You know, you're badass. <laughs> Yeah, you can be mean, but you can be good. You can be all these things. You can be multiplicitous. Mm -hmm. There is a um, goddess trope of the triple goddess, which is like the maiden, mother, and crone. So it's like a goddess who has like three faces. Like the goddess, Greek goddess Hecate is very popular. She showed up in the recent seasons of Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. They're like a satanic cult, but then they evolve and they start to be a like feminine worshiping cult. And then they start worshiping the triple goddess. 
I haven't seen it. No. You wouldn't. I don't... You could like it. It's super mm. campy. Sort of like the Love Witch was. Gets really weird. I kind of love that show because of, again, like, these characters who are dark at the same time as being good and light. It's like intertwined and it's also a big represents a big shift away from the patriarchy and male power and celebrating female power apparently like goddess worship used to be like incredibly more prolific and then like so many ancient like sculptures and stuff were destroyed and goddess culture was wiped out in the name of like the patriarchy so like old religions and practices and beliefs were just totally wiped out huh yeah they say goddess artemis she was like the first bitch because she always had a pack of dogs around her oh yeah yeah the serpent snakes used to be a very goddess goddess like imagery and then it became obviously like taken and a symbol of corruption i wish i could like a snake <laughs> you like snakes. But I'm afraid. She's like really afraid of snakes, but also loves snakes. It's true. Mm. You know, everybody's always so worried about um um what is that uh bacteria on chicken? Salmonella. Yeah, you get salmonella off freaking turtles and stuff. Oh yeah. You don't get salmonella off the chickens. Some snakes on a plane? Probably. <laughs> They're probably full of salmonella. The snakes, the snakes, the snakes. Okay. I just started doing, and we're going to see what happens. Me too. I'm just sort of elongating. Mm, that's I'm using the dark, too. musty greens at the bottom, Bewitched. right? Bewitched. The names in this palette are really funny, especially if you've seen Hocus Pocus. There's like, Tis Firm, Night of Frolic, Dead Man's Toe, Bewitched. What's my favorite one? Yabos. If you've seen, you know. Okay. I'm making a neutral, 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 neutral eye. Oh. Because I think I'm going to try a little bit of eyeliner. Oh, daring. Something I, I like about the reclamation of the word witch is like that reclamation of the insults. Like we touched on like ugly, old, hag. Those aren't insults for men, mm. you know? Why? It's kind of really, really fucked up that those are specifically insults. I'm going to women. start insulting men. <laughs> You're old. You're ugly. It just doesn't happen. It doesn't carry the same weight as... But it's like, why? And then women get afraid of being old. We shouldn't. We should embrace our age. But I mean, that's also them. women's faults. Well... We sabotage each other about that Well, one. let's stop. Let's start being witches and bitches. That's the Still gonna one. get Botox, so. Yeah, you can get Botox. Botox is good. Do what you need, do what you want. I'm using On Toast. On Toast. To blend. That's her baby. Her baby. My dog's name is Toast. <laughs> <laughs> the Wizard of Oz used to scare me as a kid. Me too. It's terrifying. Terrifying. Well, it was very well done. When's the last time you watched it? Oh, ages ago. What's your scariest part? Flying monkeys. The monkeys were pretty terrifying, yeah. Well, that lady also wanting to take the dog away. Oh, yeah. And you're a little dog, too. This is actually going quite nicely. I'm not sure if I'm going to put glitter on it. Okay, what do you think of my baby? It's cute. It's not bad, right? Oh, look, your thing's lighting up. She's always criticizing my liner. I was. <laughs> and I'm going to put a little bit of sparkle in the middle. Boop, boop, boop. This sparkle's called Brew Potion. It's like little stars have fallen on your eyes. I'm going to use um, Super Shock. Color pop highlight for my inner corner. How's your cocktail? <laughs> Is yours empty? I don't know. No. Is yours? No. Chill today, unlike last time. <laughs> uh, yeah, we were a mess. 
talking about Promising Young Woman. If you missed that one, definitely check it out. Definitely check out that movie. Oh, my God. She's a bitch. Oh, yeah, in a good way. Yeah, in a good way. Yeah. Did you have the reaction? Yeah, of like, I did. She's a bitch. <gasps> yeah. yeah. How dare you say that about No, she's the badass bitch. Okay, let's do our mascara and be right back. Okay, eyelashes are done. Lips. I use the Likely Makeup Blissful Baby Lashes. They're so cute. Okay. Look how cute. Oh, so nice. I just use mascara. Um, you're using... I'm going to do PMS, because what's bitchier than that? I know. PMS. I'm using Vive. Vive lipstick in the color Vive. Anything you've been wanting lately? Anything I've been wanting? Um, well, the Auric. Yeah. That's and I got of... it. Well, I don't got it. It's coming in the mail now. Uh, but besides that, no. What about you? Um, not really. I got an exciting new release. We're going to do it. We're going to do it for the next time. It's the Nomad Iceland palette. It represents Iceland, you'll see. It's really pretty. We're Icelandic, kind of. Have you got oh. your um, DNA back? No, but I got a message that it's being processed in the lab. I'm really hoping to have a little surprise in there, you know. You don't want to be related to no serial killer, though. Oh, no. Is that the surprise we'll find out? <laughs> well, that's what, what happens. I'm putting this, what, is it called Fiesta? Candy Venom. <laughs> okay. Fiesta. Ooh. That's fun. Ooh. I like how the inside matches your shirt. Ooh, I like. Nice. Mm. So this is our witchy and bitchy looks. What do you think, people? Do you consider yourself a witch or a bitch? <laughs> Hopefully you do. Because <laughs> that's who we all aspire to be, I think. Me too. Maybe one of the Sanderson sisters. Or Samantha. Yeah, Samantha. Or Sabrina. Or Sabrina. Or the love witch. Or the witch from The Witch. That's like a creepy movie. I, saw I haven't recently. seen it yet. I want to see it. It's spooky. It's like a oh, witch. It's the one with the girl from uh, The Queen's Gambit. Yeah. Yeah. I saw a little snippet of it. She looks like she's like 12. Yeah. And it's filmed right near here, near Algonquin Park. She's so cute. Yeah. So we hope that you are taking after these witches and bitches in your life and that you're, you know, having a good COVID days. Yeah, COVID days. They're, you know, tough for us all. Yeah. So we have fun with makeup. Have fun with makeup. Don't forget to wear color. Like... Just do it. You can still wear sweatpants and do this. <laughs> I'm wearing sweatpants right now. So am I. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we'll see you next time. We're going to be uh, doing that Nomad Iceland palette. So, um, yeah. Fuck, so, I suck. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so see you next time. <laughs> Bye, Bye, witches. witches.